and let us all that we can to build a better future. Let's talk about the aftermath. The aftermath of Bernie, Bernie, Bernie Sanders backing Biden and well, saying that Dr. Cornell West is sh- should not be making a run for a third party. So a lot of people decided to comment on Bernie Sanders. So I decided to highlight this story one more time because I think it's important for us to remember that at the end of the day, Bernie is with the Democratic Party. He already proved that he's a cuck. He's all in with Biden, who's been on the wrong side of history. I want to pull up this uh, tweet here from Ajamu Braka. Bernie's comments are incoherent because Bernie displays an interesting kind of cognitive dissonance whenever he discusses Biden and Democratic Party politics. Bernie knows West is correct, but he has to oppose West because of his own surrendering to logic of lesser of two evilism. And here's the thing about lesser of two evils, okay? Voting for the lesser of two evils, you're still voting for evil. Nothing is going to change. You have to break away from it. This is why I encourage my audience to support or look into supporting independents and third parties, looking at citizen ballot initiatives and building movements and organizations not connected to Washington, D.C., and breaking away from voting Democrat and Republican. Because the two-party system is what has been keeping us down. It doesn't matter who controls the Senate or House. It doesn't matter who sits in the White House. At the end of the day, Goldman Sachs has the final seat. You, the average voter, are not on the minds of these politicians. And Bernie Sanders has proven that he's just like these jagoff politicians. Case in point, I want to pull up this tweet here from Dr. Jill Stein, the great bad guy or bad gal in 2016 who who triggers vote blue no matter who people are saying, oh my God, it's because of her. It's because of her. Hill dog lost. No, no, that's not how it works. Hillary Clinton lost because she was a piss poor candidate. Dr. Jill Stein, Bernie, you would have won the primaries and the presidency had the DNC not tipped the scales in 2016 and in 2020. If that didn't scare the Democrats into ignoring their corporate wing, what makes you think idle words will get through now? This is sheepdogging, Bernie. It's pathetic. And again, there was this infamous live stream in New Hampshire to give a major address on why Democrats just ignore the corporate wing of the party and instead put forward a bold agenda that addresses the needs of American struggling working class. So this guy is doing nothing but feel good porn. Oh, well, anyways, that's all it is at this point. That's all what Bernie's doing. Had 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 to watch myself. Oh, hopefully YouTube doesn't doesn't flag flag the video, but whatever. It is what it is. You know, Bernie's just wants wanting wanting people to feel nice and and happy, just eating up the neoliberal soup. I want to pull up this video here from Case Study QB. Be sure to follow him on Twitter. He's wrongly being censored because here's where corporate media is reporting this story. While the field of 2024 Republicans remains deep, Senator Bernie Sanders, one of Biden's key rivals in 2020, announced yesterday he will back the president's reelection bid. It is no secret that I want Joe Biden to be reelected president. And And again, this is what a cuck looks like. This is what a failure looks like. This is what a person who has backstabbed his own political movement looks like. Again, Bernie, still impressive that you could get in the crowds. But nonetheless, that fire of 2016 was nothing but a lie. If if this doesn't show you that all of 2016 and everything afterwards that was associated with Bernie Sanders was a lie, I don't know what else to tell you. Bernie Sanders never had our interests at heart. He was never, ever going to fight for us. And I think it's time for all of us to move on from him because this is, again, all the evidence I need to walk away from voting Democrat. Because I'm going to play a video a little bit later on this segment that will show Bernie Sanders' true hypocrisy between how he is now, between how he was then of beating back right-wing extremism. NBC's Ryan Nobles joins me now live from Washington. So, Ryan, why is Bernie Sanders' support so important to the Biden campaign? 
Well, Lindsay, there's no doubt that they're concerned about the progressive flank of the Democratic Party, in particular because Cornell West, uh, who was a big backer of Bernie Sanders' previous campaigns for president, is running his own independent campaign. And there is the worry that in a couple of these key swing states that that could siphon away progressive votes from Joe Biden. This is Bernie Sanders sending a signal to progressive voters that he is on board with Biden's reelection campaign. He believes the stakes are too high to go with any sort of risky route and that he wants Biden. The risks are too high. The danger is too great. So let's vote for incrementalism. Let's let let's 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 vote for nothing to fundamentally change, but for things to get progressively worse. Let's let's go for a guy, Joe Biden, who gladly prostituted himself to corporations, who gladly sold out the American people. Let's let's go ahead and give it up all for a Democratic politician who helped design this neoliberal economic nightmare that we're in. And to be reelected and also saying that he believes that Biden has made a lot of progress, particularly on these progressive issues over his first term in office, Lindsay. So Bernie Sanders was on Meet the Press this morning. What did he tell Chuck Todd about the 2024 Democratic primary? Well, he really kind of implored progressive voters to not think of it. uh, Don't think of it. I just, I just, 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 just wanted to pause it right there. Cause again, after hearing that part of the video, I'm like, wait a minute, don't think, don't think, you know, Bernie knows that again, Trump is going to be an unstoppable force. And look, I just want to pull this video of uh, this image up here. Again, the energy is shifting support among black voters. Look at that. This was in 2020, 91% for Biden, 8% for Trump. This is absolutely shocking and devastating for the Democrats. 2023, 20% for Trump, 61% for Biden. Now, where is that missing 10%? Where's that 10% at? What they don't tell you about these polls is occasionally there's the other option. Would you vote for a third party? A lot of voters, not just black voters, but a lot of voters, no matter their demographic, is looking at independents, looking at the Green Party, looking at libertarians, looking at independents. The majority of Americans are identifying themselves as independents, and Bernie the Cuck Sanders knows that. Uh, as a, a divide within their party, but to, to look at the bigger struggle, and that struggle being against the danger of Donald Trump being reelected and sent back to the White House. Listen to what he told Chuck this morning. Do you think there would be a robust discussion on this on the left if there were a competitive primary? Do you think there should be? Well, what I have, I think in this particular time, this particular moment in American history, when we're taking on uh, somebody, the former president, who in fact does not believe in democracy. He is an authoritarian uh, and a very, very dangerous person. I think at this- A very dangerous person, like Barack Obama, who got rid of habeas corpus, led us from two wars to seven, has a Nobel Peace Prize, but also has a high drone count kill as well. Yeah, wait, wait, way to go. Now look, Trump is no saint. But, you know, the Democrats, they've done some pretty authoritative stuff. They act like a lot of tyrants. I mean, case in point, we here in hard lens media, we have been censored not once but eight times. A lot of our colleagues in independent media, I've said this before, I'll say it again, have been hit hard. Some of them have been permanently demonetized or removed off of the platforms. A lot of platforms, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But Bernie... Bernie wants, wants, wants all of us to be afraid of Trump, the orange boogeyman. This moment, there has got to be a unification mm-hmm. of progressive people in general all over this country, people who are prepared to make sure that women control their own body, that we deal with climate change, that we represent the needs of the working class of this country and take on the billionaire class. And of course, in the past, Bernie Sanders didn't think Joe Biden was the person for that job. It's one of the reasons that he ran against him in 2020. And those two were, of course, the last two standing in the Democratic primary this time around. Uh, Let's be very clear here. There was actually a third person who was in there that's no longer mentioned. 
Uh, Tulsi Gabbard was the last woman candidate in the Democratic primary of 2020. Just just has just have to throw that out there. Just have to throw that out there. Predominantly just to trigger vote blue no matter who people. Because I, I, I like being their bad guy. Around, he is imploring these Democratic voters not to take any chances with the 2024 race, saying it's time to get behind the current incumbent uh, and reelect him as president of the United States. Lindsay. Again, Bernie has proven himself to be the cuck that we all know him to be. I also want to pull up this uh, tweet right here because, again, this perfectly defines who Bernie Sanders is as an individual. Shout out to J.B. Font, who's with Revolutionary Blackout Network. What's the similarity between Beyonce concert and Bernie Sanders? They both sold out. But dare I say it, you might learn more at a Beyonce concert than hearing Bernie Sanders speak to the people in New Hampshire. Again, stuff that we've heard before over and over again from this cuck. Let's go ahead and pull up this video here again, just one more time, just to show you who Bernie Sanders is. He's given up. This is a man who had a political movement and threw it away. What's the difference between Trump and Bernie? Trump kept his political movement together. Trump stood by his people. Now, yes, he's like any other politician, but Bernie Sanders gave up on you. Bernie Sanders lied to you. Bernie Sanders took us all for a ride. Bernie Sanders is a sheepdog for the Democratic Party. And I'm tired of vote blue no matter who and everyone else is carrying water for a progressive change in the Democratic Party from lying to people and saying that, that no, he's not. He's, he's going to fight or he's going to push Biden left. He's not going to push Biden left. He's not going to hold Biden's feet to the fire. Bernie Sanders is unimaginative. He's uncreative. He doesn't have what it takes to lead, and he's an epic failure. He failed his own political movement. He lied to all of us, and he wants all of us now to support his good friend Joe, who's been on the wrong side of history for his entire political career. Big brain move there, Bernie. Way to go. Welcome back. Back in April, Senator Bernie Sanders, who of course was Biden's chief rival in the 2020 Democratic primaries, ruled out a third presidential bid and endorsed Biden for re-election. But on Saturday, Sanders was back in New Hampshire, one of those early presidential states where he won both the 2016 and 2020 primaries to share what he called his concrete agenda for the future of the Democratic Party at the New Hampshire Institute of Politics. Of course, when you go to New Hampshire, it sparks some speculation about his own political future. It is no secret that I want Joe Biden to be reelected president. If that is going to happen, if we are going to defeat griefing authoritarianism and right wing extremism, there has got to be an ideological change, of course. The independent senator from Vermont, Bernie Sanders, joins me now. Senator Sanders, welcome back to Meet the Press. Again. This is, again, Bernie Sanders showing his true colors. Going to corporate media. Hey, J hey Bernie, Bernie, y y are you ever going to go back on the Jimmy Dore show? Thank you for having me. So the fact that you felt the need to do this, should we read into the fact that you don't believe there's a second-term agenda yet that uh, Americans can wrap their head around for what a second Biden term would look like? I think what you can read into that is that Biden has every right to be proud of a long series of accomplishments. You know, two and a half, three years ago, this country was in the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression because of COVID. Today, unemployment is all of 3%. We're gaining new jobs, rebuilding manufacturing. We've invested in the uh, infrastructure. infrastructure. Uh, we're making progress, and Biden has a right to be proud of that. The point of my remarks is that you cannot simply, as president of the United States, rest on your laurels. What you have got to understand is that today, for structural reasons that have gone on for decades, tens and tens of millions of people are struggling to put food on the table. They can't afford health care. They can't afford prescription drugs. They can't afford housing. Yeah. They can't afford child care. And meanwhile, in the midst of all of that, you have incredible corporate greed and the billionaire class has never done better so my message yesterday for the democrats not just for the president yeah is if you want to do well in this election talk to the needs of the american people have the guts to take on the big money and trust who have so much power it sounds like you don't think the phrase finish the job is something to rally around that there needs to be more than that well 
finish the job, finish the job in screwing us over. Again, I've heard the speech from Bernie over and over again about how the dangers of authoritarianism or right-wing extremism or how the economy is recovering better under Joe Biden. Hey, hey, you know I've asked this question before, but hey, let's m- maybe things change between yesterday and today. So type one if this economy is doing great for you, three meals a day full tank of gas, roof over your head, you're able to buy your prescription drugs, everything's fine, your neighbors are fine, it's dance off, pants off, everything's great, type one. Type two, no, dude. It costs $300 to go outside. I don't know how I'm going to make it past tomorrow. I don't know how I'm going to make it past this hour. What do you mean roof over my head? What do you mean a full tank of gas? What are you talking about, buddy? The economy's doing great. Say it to my face one more time or I'll smack the teeth out of your mouth. Type two, if that's your, if, if that's what you're dealing with. It's yes, you need to recognize that not only have we accomplished a great deal in Biden's first three years, and he deserves credit for that, but there are so many long term problems that this country is facing. Does anybody in America think that our health care system is working? And yet the insurance companies make tens of billions of dollars, drug companies make tens of billions of dollars. We don't have enough doctors, nurses, mental health. Remember all those nurses that got fired? Bernie? You remember those nurses? I do. And so does Petra Farm. Hey, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie Sanders, your good friend Joe. That happened under his administration. Remember all those nurses that got fired? Providers, pharmacists, dentists. So we need fundamental reform in healthcare. And by the way, the existential issue of our time is whether or not we address climate change. Climate change. Now, again, the Democrats are still voting for pipeline. A sunrise movement. What what's it like getting stuck up the wazoo? And no lube was used, and they didn't take off the pants. They just stuck it way deep in there. Sunrise movement, all those pipelines. You feel anything? Yeah, you probably do, but you're too ashamed. Sunrise movement, epic failures. And we have made some steps forward, but there is no question in my mind if we're going to provide a plot, allow our kids and grandchildren yeah. to live in a healthy planet. We've got a lot lot more to do. Do you think there'd be a robust discussion on this on the left if there were a competitive primary? Do you think there should be? Well, what I have, I think in this particular time, this particular moment in American history, when we're taking on uh, somebody, the former president, who in fact does not believe in democracy, he's an authoritarian uh, and a very, very dangerous person. I think at this... Again, look... Trump is like any other politician, but you know what? On my scale of evil, bad guys, bad people, Trump's not on the top 20, okay? No, no. I I know what to expect from Donald Trump, okay? And I'm going to say this again, and this will be a controversial statement, but for those who are paying attention, maybe this might wake you up in the middle of the night and realize, oh, my God, they're out there hiding. It's easy to see the cartoon villain, and Trump fits that profile. The mustache twirler, the bad guy, but he's not. He's not the architect of this neoliberal system. There are plenty of politicians, both Democrat and Republican, that have contributed to this decade long nightmare, many decade long nightmare of this economic situation that's causing Americans to be impoverished. Democrat and Republican, who's been serving 20, 30 plus years in Washington, D.C., There are business tycoons and corporate overlords that are far more vile, far more evil than Donald Trump. Sometimes the greatest evil hides in the light. They are able to put on this mask and smile at you and say that they care about the issues. They're able to hide their own vices, their greed, their vanity, their evil. There are far more vile people out there in this world that are hiding in the light that are far worse than Donald Trump ever could be. Trump, the threat to our republic. We don't have a republic. We don't have a democracy. Okay, again, Bernie, technically, we're not a democracy. We're a republic. Let's be very clear here. We are a republic. But in all reality, quoting Jimmy Dore here, we are an oligarchy. But hell, not only that, there's been plenty of research done to show that we live in an oligarchy. Where the top 1% control our entire political system and control our media. If you're not angry, I don't know what your excuse is. 
because we don't have a Republican here. Bernie Sanders is lying through his teeth telling you that we have a democracy, that we have these values. No, we don't. Anybody can buy a politician, Bernie. This moment, there has got to be a unification mm -hmm. of progressive people in general all over this country, people who are prepared to make sure that women control their own body, that we deal with climate change, that we represent the needs of the working class of this country and take on the billionaire class. Uh, one way that you make it clear that age isn't a factor with you is you're pretty energetic. We see you travel the country. You show up. Oh, here's the age question again. I talked about this in a previous uh, live stream last night. But again, look, Biden exhibits signs of frailty, dementia, Alzheimer's. For those of you who have taken care of loved ones, I know I have. I've seen it happen to my loved ones. I've seen it happen to four people who reached the age past 80 going on to their 90s. I, I know what it's like to see a loved one deteriorate for their mind to go soft. I've seen it firsthand, as have some of you. Doesn't Joe Biden exhibit those signs? Do we all want to keep on lying to ourselves? Joe Biden, if he's reelected, will be the oldest sitting president in U.S. history. He has no business on the throne. On you do interviews. Um, what do you, it is clearly an issue for many voters when it comes to President Biden. He's a year younger than you. You have advice to him on how he should uh, assuage those uh, concerns in the public about his age. Look, when people look at a candidate, whether it's Joe Biden or Trump or Bernie Sanders, anybody else, you know, they have to evaluate a whole lot of factors. Uh, I, you know, met with the president, I don't know, five or six weeks ago. We had a great discussion. He seemed. Yeah, really? Stop lying. Fine to me. But I think at the end of the day, what we have got to ask ourselves is what do people stand for? Do you believe the women have a right to control their own bodies? Well, the president has been strong on that. Do you think that climate change is real? Or do you agree with the Republicans that it's a non-issue? Do you think we should raise the minimum wage? Do you think we should reform and take on the pharmaceutical industry? So let's talk about this, Bernie. First of all, a woman's right to choose. Hey, you pink pussy hat people, you activists, remember? You were going to protest in the streets all day, every day, if something happened to Roe v. Wade? Oh, that's right. I don't see any of you out there. AOC managed to get fake arrested handcuff. You know, that's about it. I mean, the Democrats could have caught. There's no excuse. They could have codified Roe v. Wade. There's no goddamn excuse. The reason why they didn't do it, it's called fundraising, baby. It's all about the money. Doing something about climate change? They're not going to do anything about that. It's all about the money. Student debt forgiveness? No, it's all about the money. Medicare for all? All about the money. Affordable prescription drugs? No, never. All about the money. What do I mean about the money? Because the Democrats need to fundraise. They cause fear for people who don't have critical thinking ability to open up their wallet and give it to Democratic lawmakers. Republican politicians do the same thing, too. The Democrats have had years, decades to do the right thing, and they chose not to because it's all about the dollars. Even the mob has more integrity than the, our politicians. Because at least at the end of the day, hey, that's that's their job. They're supposed to be criminals. But God damn it, our politicians are supposed to be defending us, making our lives better. And they're not. Hey, Bernie, what is your fantastic friends in the Democratic Party doing? Just like the Republican Party is doing. Oh, that's right. Insider trading. Making their lives better. Politicians have six-figure salaries, gold-plated health care, and many other wonderful social benefits. Hey, Bernie, you're going to call out the Democrats for them not doing the right thing? No, probably not. It's always the Republicans' fault. And yes, to a degree, they have up some blame to it. But who's allowing this to continue on? Democratic politicians. Why? Because they don't believe in anything they say. Because, Bernie, you don't believe in anything you're saying either. You don't believe in your words. So age is an issue, Chuck, but there are a lot of broader issues than just that. Um. Let me ask you about Cornell West. He was a co-chair of your campaign in 2020. He's flirting with a Green Party bid for president. Um, the numbers tell the story between 2016 and 2020. Um, you can directly correlate the two third-party major candidates, third-party candidates, 
their collective total. Um, that was the difference between Biden winning states and Clinton losing those key states. Uh, are you trying to discourage Cornell West from running? Well, I've known Cornell for many, many years. He's a very independent minded guy. He will do what he wants to do. Uh, I just think, again, uh, I think Cornell or anybody else can play an important role now about raising uh, issues that are not always discussed. But at the end of the day, I think the progressive community in general and the American people yeah. have got to make a decision as to whether we stand for democracy or authoritarianism or whether or not we're going to yeah. represent working class what? families. And One of your yeah. chief political I advisors am, yeah. is concerned. Now, again, we've, we've seen this where Bernie Sanders stands on third parties, but an interesting video has been shared all over social media, and I want to share it with all of you. Here's where Bernie Sanders is talking about third parties. Because this, that, that, that Bernie Sanders we saw, he's a cuck. Now, I don't know what a rap this is, Bernie. Maybe at one point, similar to Nancy Pelosi, Bernie believed in his words and thought he was doing some good. But here's Bernie Sanders' original thoughts. So I guess people do change. Because obviously Bernie Sanders knows how to, well, grift into lying into, to people, into thinking that Joe Biden cares. You got a lot of suckers out there. But here's where, what Bernie Sanders really thought about third parties. At the beginning, this is what would happen. You had the Democratic candidate running for something, the Republican candidate. Historically, Vermont uh, had been a Republican state, a moderate Republican, not right wing and then Democrats, and then we had a third party. And what would happen is debate after debate, television program after television program, the progressive third party people would in fact get the best response from the audiences. And people would say, you know, you guys make a lot of sense. And then you go up to them and say, you're gonna vote for us? And they say, oh, of course, we're not gonna vote for you. You can't win. You're gonna vote for the Democrat. You're a much better candidate. Everything you're saying is true, but we can't waste our vote. Waste our vote was the expression. So if there's any term that drives me crazy, is this quote unquote, waste our vote. Now my own view, and it has been my view for many, many years, is that what we need in this country is what Jackson calls a rainbow coalition. But it has to be done outside of the Democratic Party. Huh. Wow. Bernie, what? <laughs> Hold on, I didn't hear that what Jackson calls a rainbow coalition. But it has to be done outside of the Democratic Party. Wait, what? Bernie, say that again one more time. Country is what Jackson calls a rainbow coalition. But it has to be done outside of the Democratic Party. And I say that here, and I'm delighted to be here with DSA because they are a non-sectarian group, and we have worked with them. And, and you know, we. Oh wow, DSA! Remember that. So what else can we say? What else can we take away from that little speech of Bernie Sanders speaking? How he was for third parties. I encourage all of you to vote how you feel like in 2024. If you're going to vote Democrat, fine. Okay. More power to you. If you're going to vote Republican, okay, fine. But I encourage everyone to maybe step outside their comfort zone, to join the silent majority, the 50% that identifies itself as independent. I encourage all of you to help build and be the leader because right now the third parties need leaders for the green party. If you want to help out the libertarian party, fine, go ahead, do that too. Or help out independent parties, help make your state into citizen ballot initiative state. Find out if you live in a citizen ballot initiative state, find out what your rights are as a voter and help build movements and organizations not connected to Washington, D.C. Now is the time to support third parties because they are not a wasted vote. It is you exercising your right to have another option. It is you exercising your voice so that the two-party system knows that they can't control you. You're not spoiling the system. The system's already spoiled. Third-party candidates aren't stealing your vote. They are earning your vote. How can, again, a politician steal a vote when they have to earn it? Democrats, if I'm going to vote third party, Cornel West didn't steal my vote. He earned it. How can he steal something? 
that I'm willing to give away freely. And my vote is not entitled to Biden or Trump or whoever will become the Republican nominee. I don't care. And I see Democrat and Republican on the on the ballot to vote for. I see two corporate parties and I walk away from it. I'm not voting for option A or option B. I need to have a clear conscience. Look, Elon Musk said in five years, AI is going to take over. I might as well have a clear conscience as much as I can when I vote. I'll be damned if I'm going to contribute to a two-party system that has made all of our lives hell. As a final note, I'm going to quote somebody here in my live stream chat. Bernie, you want to know what the real tr truth is? You were the wasted vote. You were the wasted time. 